Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be taking you through what to expect on your AQA GCC English Language Paper 1. Now do not worry, it is not me explaining this to you. I have an English teacher that I have asked to help me with this bit of the project. So we're going to be explaining to you what sort of things you can expect, the, the skills that you need for each thing, each question, what sort of um, time you should be spending and how you should be planning lots of different things. This is all part of a massive section and if you want to see some um, walkthroughs of some practice papers that we've written, then they're all on my website. Welcome to your overview of the AQA GCSE English Language Paper 1. I will be giving you some tips on how to get top marks and the best strategies for your revision too. For the exam, you need to know the following. You need to understand what the paper will look like and have some understanding of the style of extract that you'll be given. You also need to know how many questions you have to answer, what the examiner wants from you, and how long you should be spending on each question. Lastly, you need some sort of battle plan for this paper. You need to know how you are going to approach and structure each answer. This will make your life so much easier when it comes to sitting the exam. Paper one is all about exploring fiction, reading, and writing your own descriptive or narrative piece. The paper is one hour, 45 minutes, and there are 80 marks up for grabs across two sections. This paper is worth 50% of your entire GCSE, so every minute and mark is important. For section A, you are given a fiction text from the 20th century and beyond, and you will be asked four questions about that extract. Whereas for section B, you will answer one of two questions often one narrative choice and one description. This is where you will show off your creativity and linguist skills. Each section is worth 40 marks. The first 15 minutes are super important and in my opinion, set a precedent for the rest of the exam. Nail these 15 minutes and you will find the paper easier. However, I would recommend that before you even commence reading the extract, Quickly number the paragraphs and have a scan over each of your questions, taking particular notice of question four. What is the focus of the statement? This way, when you are reading, you are already thinking about the bigger picture. Now it's time to start reading. Remember, read the text slowly. Do not skim read, and if you have time, read it again. For each paragraph, summarize the paragraph in one word. This will help you for question three. Once you have finished reading, simply jot down your initial thoughts on question four. Do you agree with the statement? Do you disagree with it? By quickly jotting down your thoughts, when you eventually come to answering question four, you'll already be ready to go. Okay, so you've finished reading and you're feeling confident about the extract, so it's time to start answering your section A questions. You should aim to spend around 45 minutes on this section over the four questions, so it is vital that you keep an eye on the time. Question one is worth four marks, so spend an absolute maximum of four or five minutes on this question. Question one simply asks you to list four things about a specific focus and test you on your AO1 skills. Simply put, this means can you pick out key information? The question may read, list four things about the house, or list four things about the character Jim, or four things that the character Jim does. So top tips for this question, read the question carefully and ensure you are reading from the specific lines stated in the extract. If you go beyond those lines, you won't get them up. Select four explicit pieces of information. Don't try and make this harder for yourself than it needs to be. If the extract says, Jim is 45 years old, you can simply write, Jim is 45 years old. Remember to write in full sentences and avoid any pronouns. Just write the character's name or the setting. Do not write more than four things. If you do, the examiner will stop marking you after number four anyway. And remember, move on. Write four and go. Don't waste any time on this question. Question two is worth eight marks. So you should be looking to spend around 10 minutes on this question. Question two tests you on your ability to analyse language and explore how writers use language for effect. 
you will need to identify and explain the effect of specific linguistic choices too. For example, the writer uses the simile to show. The question will ask you, how does the writer use language to describe a specific focus? And they give you a short part of the extract to focus on. This is where you should be analysing your two best quotations. I like to call them your most diverbal quotes. What I mean by this is the quote that you can pick apart and say several points of analysis about. Top tips. Only use those diverbal quotes. Can you say at least three things about this quote? Use subject-specific terminology, for example, similes, imagery, lexical choice. Build on your analysis. Examiners love seeing how your analysis progresses and levels up, zooming in on specific words and commenting on their individual effect. Like question two, question three is also worth eight marks, so you should only spend 10 minutes on this question. The good news is, if you followed my advice earlier by summarising each paragraph, you already started this question. Question three is another AO2 focus, but this time you were exploring the effect of the writer's structural features. What specific effect did they want to convey? The question is often worded by saying, how has the writer structured the text to interest the reader? But don't worry about the interest the reader part. Instead, focus on the writer's craft. Okay, so the top tips for this question, do not analyse language. You will not get any marks at all. You should focus on when and where the writer shifts the focus around the text. What is the focus at the beginning? Does this change quickly or does it linger? Where does the focus shift and how has the writer decided to end the piece? Look for shifts in pace, foreshadowing, flashbacks, and comment on why the writer might have done this. What effect does it generate? Use quotations directly from the text to support your point, and you should be looking to aim for around three main points. Question four is worth a whopping 20 marks, and therefore you want to spend the majority of your time on it. This means you have 20 minutes to answer this question. Question four tests you on your AO4 skills. You need to evaluate how successfully language and structural points build a particular effect. You'll be given a statement from a student about the extract and asked about the extent to which you agree with it. Again, if you followed my previous advice, you've already jotted down your initial thoughts on the statement. The statement usually has two points of focus. For example, the teacher is presented as inspirational, but it is clear that the students also fear him too. You should comment on both parts. The question will give you specific lines to look at too. Make sure you make note of this. Top tips. Begin with an overview. What is your overall opinion? Use quotations to support your opinion. Analyse why this quotation makes you feel a certain emotion. What technique has the writer used to make you feel this way? Track if and why your opinion changes. And congratulations, you have finished your section A. You now have 45 minutes left and one more question to answer. Section B is your time to get creative and show off to the examiner. Question five is an extended creative writing task worth 40 marks. You get two choices of questions, either writing a descriptive piece based on a picture given to you or a narrative prompt. The photo is usually inspired by the previous extract. For example, if the extract was about an older teacher, the picture given to you may be an image of an elderly person. Your 40 marks are divided into two assessment objectives. 24 marks are available for AO5, which is your content. How effective is your narrative or descriptive structure? Are you using a range of language and structure techniques? Is your writing quality and engaging? Is your writing appropriate to the specific purpose for the question? And 16 marks are given to AO6, your SPAG marks, your spelling, punctuation and grammar. Is your writing coherent? Are you using paragraphs? Is your writing grammatically correct? Are you using ambitious vocabulary and varying your sentence structure? Top tips for question five. Spend 10 minutes planning. A simple bullet point list planning each of your paragraphs is fine. 
but do make a note of any interesting language or structural techniques that spring to mind. Spending time planning will mean that your writing will be focused. Dedicate five minutes editing and proofreading your work. Those 16 AO6 marks, your SPAG marks, are so vital. Try not to repeat any of your vocab choices. Remember to level it up. Use your own experiences. This will make your writing far more realistic. And that's it. You have finished your AQA GCSE English Language Paper 1. Well done! Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>